starting and you can feel like this is not easy I guess um, yeah the past decades I've been called a lot of things by regular people by physicians mm. the regular people call me anything from unnatural and unnatural existence to beautiful woman, everything in between. I've been accused of being a charlatan. Just little things by physicians, by mental health professionals. I've been called oh, so many things, uh, so many diagnoses as well. Just a regular male feminine looking male suffering from autoparagynecophilia which doesn't exist as a diagnosis anyway but <sighs> transgender that's another one hermaphrodite that's another one and these days apparently in the media I'm being referred to as an intersex activist that's quite a few different things and I guess at least some of them might actually be true some probably are true the question is only which one which ones and that's well let's start at the beginning basically of it's it's a big puzzle it's something I've been struggling with for a while and it's best to start at the beginning. Um, for me, it basically starts when I was still a child. I was, well, people told me I was a boy. So I was a boy. And life was good. Kind of. Until, well, year. Well, it was about five or six when it became a bit weird. I didn't quite know where I fit in with everything. Um, so I became quiet. Then puberty started. And I began to <laughs> grow something that's resembled a beard. I. Yeah, I got a lower voice, I started to shave, I also got breast growth, I also got hips. I always had a sore throat when I spoke for a while, I had a sore back when I had walked a lot. Just later finding out that I had been using my voice and unnaturally and I'd been walking in a very unnatural way because I had no clue about what my body was really like. So apparently I never really looked into a mirror. That's what I did after when I had been alive for over two decades at the age of 21. Just looking in a mirror and finally seeing that my body was different from how I had imagined it was. That same year, I had also found out that I had never picked what I wanted to be, to put it bluntly, male or female. It's in a, the gender role I wanted to live in. Up to that point, I had never picked either side, not since the age of five apparently. So, about 15, 16 years that I had just been stuck in the emotional mindset of an eight-year-old in many ways just the way I saw myself, the way I behaved myself I knew how I should behave myself I tried to fit in the male pattern people expected from me but of course it never worked I just didn't feel right, it was always really awkward especially when uh, people began to see me as, as female, even when I was still 
wearing male clothes and had short hair, people already saw me as being female. When I started growing out my hair because I wanted to, well, I thought I am male, I want to be tougher, so I just grow out my hair and to go into a bit more long haired rocker style or something like that. And that had an interesting effect of people seeing me as female most of the time by then. People asking me in stores, are you male or female? Children in the streets asking me the same question. People thinking or assuming that I was female all the time. It was confusing. So, then at some point, after two decades, looking back, looking at myself, figuring out that hey, that is not right, I am not male, my body is not male because, I mean, I can see it's not male. The people around me apparently see the same thing, so it must be right. Then, moving on with that information, well, there is only on one other possibility then, then I must be female. Right. That's when I found out about the intersex. Which is, well, if you imagine males on one side and females on the other side, then the other 99% in between has the intersex. And apparently I was somewhere there in between. The only question was where? I thought that, well, I was kind of happy to have found out that at least I knew something, what direction I should be searching in, and that I should be should be able to find the information. I needed to answer this one central question, what is this body? What can I do with it? What can I expect from it? It was three questions, but it all comes down to the one single question, what am I? So I went to see physicians, like then still in the Netherlands. But that didn't really give me any answers. I went to the gender team of the VUMC hospital in Amsterdam, in expectation that they would help me, that they would do examinations, that they would examine me and give me answers. But instead, they did some half-hearted examinations and they started accusing me of just being a confused transgender that I just or just confused. I read a letter from them to my um, GP at the time in which it's literally stated that well that term yeah confused transgender or and then Pretty much like uh, this one final sentence was like um, just that I was showing displaying unuseful behavior for a transgender. Well, <sighs> shocking because I never was a transgender. This is how far I got there. Things didn't really change until a few years later when I went to Germany to have an MRI scan made. Which resulted in the conclusion that I am intersex, I am, am a hermaphrodite, which means that I have both male and female genitals, so I have dual developments of the genitals. It also translates in a dual development of a primary and secondary uh, characteristics in the rest of my body, which is quite apparent with the um, breast growth, development of well female hips, while also being able to grow something slightly like a beard, but more like sturdy fuzz. So, yeah, I thought that at that point, with that conclusion from that MRI scan, that things would be clear. I found the answers. I didn't understand why I didn't receive any help in the Netherlands, but now I finally had my answers. What happened after that in 2007, 
in all in seven years following it up till now. I don't know how to describe it. I've seen so many physicians, so many psychologists and everybody else and I've tried to get help and answers in the Netherlands, in Germany, in the UK, in the United States, Canada, Norway, Belgium, Australia. For those the countries I forgot. But I still don't have answers. The last report I got here from a German hospital, which actually has links with a VMC hospital in Amsterdam, told me that while they did not see any female genitals at all, and they did see a prostate with this stone completely 180 degrees opposite from the conclusion from every other German physician at this point. The comical effect of that is that I still don't have answers, I still don't know anything. And, well, that complicates things because when I figured out that I was more female, no, by now almost 10 years ago, it's... I, I, how to put it? You know what feels better with the gender role, but just being able to say, well, I like, I even like that more, that fits more with, with how I think I am, doesn't mean that you know what your body is, and you also have to translate this role you have to your own body, because there are things which in daily life, and also not daily life, which actually are impacted by how your body is. If we're just talking about simple thing, well, we have toilets separated into male and female toilets. So, well, if you were to go purely by genitals at this point, what is absolutely 100% certain, then I would have to go to the male toilets. But I don't. Because I actually, in 2012, I actually got in Netherlands town, I got it confirmed that I am allowed to call myself female. My passport says I'm female. So that was actually based on medical evidence from Germany indicating that I also have female genitals. It's <laughs> the same conclusion with this being disagreed with by every single, well, almost every single Dutch physician and this one physician now in Germany with the ties in Netherlands. So, okay, I accomplished that I can call myself female, I accomplished uh, a few years before the decision 2012 already that I can call myself Maya instead of my old name, which was given to me when I was born. But does this really solve anything? I don't think so. I mean, it's in daily life, it's nice that people just call me female. They see me, they are not confused because in the past it was still Mr and they would call me in the waiting rooms and places like that and they would be confused because they didn't understand because what they saw did not match up with their expectation of they expected to see a male when they saw on their piece of paper or screen Mr. but they saw a female and that at least that is resolved but that's for me it still doesn't solve the essential question, what am I? Even after 10 years, that question is still there. And 
At this point, I really don't think that I will get help for that anytime soon, really. I don't think I'll ever know the answer to that question. I don't know why I'm not allowed to know the answer. I do know why I want to know it. I do know why it's important to me. Because at this point, I know that just in everyday life, just look around you, what is one thing which is so present, bodies, sexuality, couples, <laughs> relationships, they are all things which are so tied into this, this these bodies, the physical, the genitals, just and those gender roles. If you take that away, I mean, I've talked about this in a previous video, and it's how intrinsic sexuality is in just being human. And I believe that you can extricate sexuality from world's existence to some extent, but. There are limits. I know that for myself, during the past 10 years, even in the two decades before that, there have been a lot of incidents related to sexuality, related to my body, not, not just having experienced getting raped and sexually abused, not just that, also the the invasiveness of physicians with yet another physical examination, yet another penetration, yet another time just throwing away my dignity because they told me to without it giving me anything in return. It's just, you cannot shake that off, it's not just every time you see your own body, you are reminded of that, even if you try not to. And I, I know I'm lucky, because compared to many other intersex individuals, I'm actually lucky in some ways, because my body is still intact. I have talked to so many, received messages, letters, emails from so many other intersex individuals telling me their story. How many of them just only figured out that something um, was different when they were born because they have this scar or some really unusual remarks in their medical file from when they were an infant and only later finding out that through digging into and forcing information out that they actually had had forced genital surgery as an infant that organs were removed so they had re received invasive surgery to remove part of themselves because it was deemed wrong even though it would not have caused them any kind of medical or physical inconvenience. <laughs> it's completely unneeded. It's pretty much like if you have, um, oh, just the, for example, the uh, female um, genital mutilation, which people complain a lot about in certain African and other cultures. Well, this is like it, because if society decides that something is wrong and they change it without asking the infant, the person in question, where it's okay. It's not medical, medically necessary because the body functions, nothing is going wrong, not even with puberty, nothing will go wrong. The individual is not in pain, but still, it's wrong because society says so. 
And that's the thing I think with intersex in the Philippine community also it's really which is actually wrong. Because the moment an intersex child, infant is born, they're wrong. And because they are wrong, something is wrong with them, they instantly at that point lose any kind of human rights and they just become a medical experiment. Because there is no indication whatsoever and every re response I've read, all the stories I've read from uh, affected individuals make it so incredibly clear that the only thing you can do if you do perform something that invasive with so incredibly harms and invades and violates the integrity of a person's being that you cannot imagine the harm because like those adults at this point who find out that their parents signed off on having invasive surgery performed on them having organs removed having their entire, entire genitals just restructured because it was wrong even though there was no medical reason, no medical necessity, they didn't know whether picking the female or male genital form, uh, form was, would be better later on. But... Because <laughs> nobody cares about intersex individuals. Because we are wrong. And I noticed that even today, with just me, I'm fortunate to have escaped for genital surgery as a child. Which I actually talked about this with my mother. And she told me that if back when I was born, if they had been able to see something, like see a hole there where the vagina then would be, and they were like, okay, well, these genitals look a bit funky, we have to correct this. And if they, the physicians at that point had asked my mother, do you want to have it changed? She would probably have said yes, because she was not informed. And even today, at this point, 30 years later, it's still the same problem. Because we intersex people aren't people, at this, even at this point. We don't have human rights, nobody knows we exist. And because we don't exist, nobody knows we exist. We don't have rights, because you only give rights to humans who actually are, exist. People know you exist. So, lucky, but also not so lucky, I guess. <sighs> so, um, at this point, I don't know. In my last blog post, I actually already reported on the findings from the last German hospital I was at how just incredible their results were in a not so positive way but, and also that I I really don't see any use in continuing trying to find help really it's been 10 years for me now as I said, I've tried to find help in so many different countries around the world. But... I just... I guess the best I can do at this point is just try to survive. Which mostly means that... Well... To put it... Crudely. I have to forget about a lot of things which I can't do anything with. Which means that, well, I can't use his body really because I don't know what his body really is. I cannot... Things like sexuality, well, let's forget it, it's not going to happen. It's just no way in hell between the traumas of Salvert, between the uncertainties, between all the bad memories, 
between just just not plain knowing which genitals I even have or how things function or what I can expect in the future. It's just no. Forget about that. Even if it means never having sex again for the rest of my life. Well, at this point I would actually welcome that. Because there is nothing positive there. So that's, that's easy. Just, but of course I do have to deal with seeing males, females and even same-sex couples just playing around with each other, whether it's in movies or in real life, you know, couples holding hands. Yeah, you are reminded of it all the time, it's not going away, even if you force it out of your mind, it's still there. But actually it's quite horrible that you have to force yourself to forget about those things, to ignore it in real life, because no physician seems to want to tell you what is really going on with your body. That you have to cut out the restrictions of what it actually means to be human. Because they just cannot be bothered to actually provide the help they for to provide. And whether it's in my case, my situation, what is for any of those infants, children, teenagers, and even adults who just have the misfortune of being born into sex? That's, there are apparently no, just incredibly few physicians who actually feel that they should provide those individuals with the same kind of help as other non-intersex individuals. That's just wrong. I know that I just have to continue my life somehow. I know that Even if you're in Germany, I will not get help. I need the answers I need, even if there will not be surgery of any form. I know that I am intersex. I'm probably a hermaphrodite. That's probably true. But God, I find it so hard every day to see people around me who actually know what their body is like, how they are, what what their body means to them. And to them, every time with that, to be reminded that you don't know it. You don't know what your body is like. You don't know which organs you have. And that's even just with the status quo. I'm not even talking about, as I mentioned in my blog, that, well, apparently I have a monthly cycle because every month for at least a week I am just in agony. How is the end of the month? It's some kind of cycle, okay. With symptoms, with yeah, like cramps, just, uh, sore feet, sore hips, the whole stuff, you know, which apparently is normal with having a period. <laughs> Fun. So, apparently, I may have something like ovaries or ovarian tissue somewhere, but I don't know. It might even become cancerous at some point. I don't know. Without any kind of medical help, the only way I will find out about those questions is when something goes wrong. And just like in all those 
stories you get in the media about when well, some guy has stomach pains, goes to the hospital, they find that he actually has a complete wound and ovaries and stuff there and it's causing issues and has to be removed. Well, since my physiology is apparently so unusual, I could also at some point get complications because of it and they may or may not be serious enough to go to the hospital and I may or may not die because of it, I don't know probably not, but you don't know because you don't know what your body is and is that actually worse than having forced genital surgery as an infant? I don't know what is worse? I think it's just as bad because it's in the end what it comes down to is this violation that your body is being violated by just people cutting away tissue and reshaping it in a way they want it like in some kind of stick horror movie or that they refuse your help after having tormented you for years because they aren't interested enough, they don't think that you deserve it, or they just don't care, they can't be bothered, or you're not interesting enough, or you already don't have human rights, I don't know what it is. I know that with rare conditions it's hard to find help, but intersex isn't rare. You're talking about a condition which afflicts, well, one in one thousand at least. One in every 150 seems to be the more up to date number. It's a lot, it's not rare, it's not a rare condition. All of the intersex conditions, they are quite common, from AIS to well, XXY and I don't know, there are so many different conditions and okay, hermaphroditism like I have is kind of rare but it also should make it mentally more interesting but, well, I would not mind to be a medical experiment if it meant that I would actually get the attention and help I needed but instead I've had five MRI scans, I've been anally penetrated and examined and prodded and poked and questioned and ridiculed and advised more times than I can count and that's not the kind of medical experiment I would want to be because it doesn't help me so I don't know I know that one thing I like about myself as a person is that I have a good mind. Whether you call it gifted or something else, doesn't matter. I know that I have an interest, mostly in the sciences and with technology. I love doing stuff with that. So. intellectual pursuits that's something I can focus on that's something I can use to distract myself but beyond that I don't 
think there is going to be anything else. Not with this lack of medical help. And my god, and I know that I don't ever want to hope for medical help again. Because decades of getting no medical help and I'm sure it weighs up to maybe maybe just finding that help if you just keep trying sometimes it's better to just give up admit that you won't get help that it is hopeless maybe it will get better for newer generations. The generations I've been fighting for, the intersex children who have been born only recently or will be born in the near future. That's because of my struggles, my fights. That's at least something that I've improved for them. But they won't have to go through the same. <sighs> but they would have to go through the same hell as I have. I'm actually not sure. I actually I forgot how to do this hell. I think I'm still in it. And I don't think I'll ever get out of it. Because. <sighs> Come on. After 10 years of trying, there can't be anything left, right?